Ozone is the gold standard when it comes to water sanitation, and for good reason. It's effective, and after you set everything up, it's maintenance-free. It works better than UV light, and it sure beats having chlorine or other chemicals in your water. I'm Joe with DIY Cold Plunge. Let's take a look at the Spa 124 ozone generator. You may have guessed it, but the ozone generator produces ozone. It's pulled into your plumbing system through the vacuum at your Venturi, where it mixes with the water and goes to work. It's an extremely effective oxidizing agent. It kills a wide range of microorganisms, algae, and bacteria, and it's more effective than chlorine and leaves no chemical residue. After about 30 minutes or so, it breaks back down into oxygen. And once you set everything up, it's plug and play, maintenance free water sanitation. So that's cool, but why this generator? If you're new here, I've spent the last two and a half years testing, retesting, researching, and learning how to build the best cold plunge that can compete with some of the big brands out there and save you a bunch of money. Learning about ozone sanitation was a big part of that. But the difference that you'll see with the one that I carry on my site is that it's rated for 50 milligrams per hour. Cold plunges in general are small bodies of water, so you don't need a high output ozone generator for water sanitation and for safety reasons. Ozone in high concentrations can cause things like irritation of your nose, eyes, and throat. Prolonged exposure can cause shortness of breath or headaches. And if you're consistently exposed to high doses of ozone, it can potentially lead to things like lung damage, which we definitely don't want. And I don't say that to freak you out or scare you away. Ozone has been widely used for years in pools and hot tubs. We just want to make sure that we use Use it wisely. And if you follow the guidelines that I'll lay out, you shouldn't have any problem at all. Your generator will come with two tubes and a check valve. You'll also notice the two holes on the unit that you can use to mount it. First, you'll want to mount it above the water line if you can. This is more a precaution against water backflowing into the generator and damaging it, so it's not critical for it to function. And I know that space is limited on the back of your cold plunge or in your mechanical area. So if you can make it work, great. If not, that's fine too. You'll want to blow into your check valve to see which way air can flow because it only flows one direction. And then hook it up so the air can flow from your generator to the Venturi in your filtration system. Another precaution against water backflow into your generator is to add a loop to your tubing. If possible, this should be above the water line for added protection. That's how the ozone generator ties into your filtration and sanitation assembly. And I'll be doing a deep dive on how this works, how to design it, and things to think about in an upcoming video. Whenever your ozone generator is plugged in, it's on. So here's how to confirm that it's working. First, look for the faint green light. You may need it to be dark or use your hand to cover it up to see it. Second, listen for a low hum or a hiss from the generator. This generator does not have a built-in air pump, so if you try to test it by dipping the tubing into water, you are not going to see any bubbles. When you're running your cold plunge, if you don't see bubbles in your water, that means we have a plumbing issue to investigate, not an issue with your generator. To ensure that your plumbing system is working properly, you need to confirm that you have a vacuum at the Venturi. The easiest way to see that is the bubbles at the return to your tank, but you can also remove the tubing from the generator and see if it will pull water from a cup. If it doesn't, make sure that your check valve is on the correct way because it's easy to get that flipped. If you still don't have a vacuum, you're gonna have to check for obstructions or inefficiencies in your plumbing setup and ensure that all of your components are in the correct order. If you need help setting up your plumbing, I've got a library of content that can help you out or feel free to check out the plumbing plans and customer reviews on my site. I've got beginner friendly start to finish plans showing exactly how to do this. Let's move on to best practices and safety. I recommend using a timer to regulate how long your ozone generator will run. And to start, go with one to two hours and schedule it for a time shortly after after you typically do your cold plunge. Using a timer is especially important if you're using your cold plunge indoors in a confined space. And just know that there's no one size fits all for how long to run your generator. Everybody uses their cold plunge differently, so you may need to experiment with your interval. Start at one to two hours and then work up from there. If you happen to run your generator too long, don't stress about it. Just open your lid, leave the room, and let it air out for about 30 minutes. Because again, that ozone is gonna turn back into oxygen. You'll also wanna shield the generator from the elements. It does have a water resistant shell, but it can be damaged if water flows into the housing. So make sure to take the precautions that I outlined earlier in the video when we talked installation. If you're in the market for an ozone generator, I hope you can consider shopping at DIYcoldplunge.com. I've got a free rubber duck waiting for you if you do. And if this was helpful, hit the subscribe button below to support the channel. I've got segments that will cover everything you need to know about filtration coming up next. I'm Joe from DIY Cold Plunge. Stay tuned for that, and we'll see you at the next video.